Welcome to the Construction Defects Podcast, a show dedicated to helping home builders navigate the tricky and expensive world of construction defect suit. So with me is John Bordenero with Moisture Intrusion Solutions, an envelope consulting firm who helps builders and the associated trades in these types of problems. Before we move on to what is a construction defect state, I, I noticed something in what we've talked about earlier where you've noted design or architectural flaws. Mm -hmm. And when I look at faulty installation, and you have faulty materials and you have design, can you just pin the uh, blame on the architect engineer or the, or the installer or the, or the manufacturer? Or is, is one basically gonna rope in the other two? So there's a hierarchy there, right? So when we do, when we get involved in a new construction project, we, we do plan review. So we will review the architect's drawing. We find that most architects are not experts in building envelope. So we will make a lot of recommendations to our architects on better details, better choices of materials than what they have drawn. We've developed very good working relationships with them over the years to help them design a better performing building envelope. That's step one. Now the architect, it's his plans. So he is the professional that is responsible for those plans. It's his stamp that's on those plans. We do a lot of work with the builders uh, and we do primarily multifamily commercial construction. So we will work a lot with the general contractors to make sure that the understanding we have of the plans, those are the official documents. We need to build it this way, so that they are building it that way. We have consultants that go on site to review the process, make sure that what's being installed is the correct material. Um, and it's being installed according to the, the agreed upon details. That keeps the risks, A, it helps the general contractor because they've, they've had people going behind them. So it keeps their risk managed. We help the architect manage their risk by pointing out problems in the plans to begin with. And then, then the installing professionals, as long as they're installing it correctly, that helps them manage their risks. So well, we, we, try to, we try to find the problems before you build it. The hierarchy, I think is great from a process point of view. But as we all know, as much as the law is trying to protect us, they love to disregard process when they're working for money. And yes. so I'm a little biased and I'll say that I think if any of the three of those things fails, the other two get to participate regardless of any one of them being 100% at fault. Absolutely. Um, if you look at any of the litigation, it's basically sue them all and let the court sort it out kind of a deal. Yeah. It, um, it so you're going to get sued. It's just this, this gives you documentation to help you defend yourself against a, a construction defect case. As I was talking with a, an attorney on a different matter, there's a difference between defensible and winning. Uh, yes. <laughs> one means you just get a chance to spend all that money on a lawyer. The other means you spent the money wisely. Yes. So being, being prepared is a big difference. And that would definitely Absolutely. be a, a takeaway. So. You know, one of the takeaways we'll just say before we move on to construction defect as a state by state issue is, hey, uh, you can't just be ready to blame the manufacturer or the architect or the installer. Correct. If any one of those three things is a problem, they're all going to be considered a problem in the lawsuit. And Absolutely. you want to be more than defensible, you want to be winnable. So uh, that's the takeaway there. Well, folks, that concludes this segment of what is a construction defect and if you're in a construction defect state. Hey, look for some more education from the Builders Books and NAHB and their Insurance Risk Management section. It's coming up. You don't want to miss it.